So apparently the shitstorm du jour is uh, Veckel freaking out over some things that he said. Uh, Skylar Fiction posted a video where, where Veckel and G-Man were uh, defending their gods in action when it comes to the rape of babies. And in fact, uh, G-Man went on to say, you know, other things too, you know, uh, pedophilia and murder and, and you know, he sort of broadened, broadened the this, this spectrum there. And it's funny because I almost made a video, actually, my wife dragged me off today. Uh, she was going to get some groceries and she managed to convince me to come along. And I, I went for a walk while she was getting groceries and, and made a video where I was addressing G-Man's goofy argument that he's come up with recently when it comes to the slavery issue. Because it's all been pointed out to him, it's been made very, very clear that the ownership of another human being is immoral, period. And this is, in fact, condoned in the Bible. The you know, it even spells out that you can leave these owned persons uh, as an inheritance to your children. So he's had to uh, bail from that argument to start saying, well, then, by the theory of evolution, uh, you are the same as a dog because you share a uh, common ancestor, and so therefore you are slave owners as well. Kind of a goofy, too coquet fallacy argument, and I was addressing that, and then I thought, you know, people don't really want me messing around with this low-hanging fruit, and I just deleted the video. And then I come home to see this. Now, first of all, I do want to say, Veckel, uh, you really should be ashamed of yourself for jumping to this, uh, running off to the the authorities. I'm going to get YouTube to deal with this. Clearly, all that that Skylar Fiction did was post a video of you saying some stuff. If you don't like that, you probably shouldn't say this stuff. I don't see anything taken out of context either. You stated your position. Your position basically being that if babies are raped under God's watch, that this must obviously be part of some sort of a grander plan that he has in store. And the reason I want to address this is because it goes back to the same argument that we hear time and time again from defenders of Scripture. When it comes to the necessity for them to defend things like rape, murder, and slavery, they must defend it because these things are sanctioned by God in the Bible and by his own actions. He did flood the entire planet at one time, correct? So they must defend these things. Unfortunately, these things are also things that are commanded against by the same God. So at one point, Skylar Fiction correctly stated that, uh, you know, when they said, how, you know, what basis do you have for saying that these things are immoral? He said, no, I'm only holding him to his own standards. And that's the whole point, of course, that I've made all along about morality is to talk about an absolute moral standard, you are talking about universality. It's not objective if there's some sort of, if, if one entity can just exclude themselves from the moral pronouncements. It's no longer absolute and it's no longer objective at that point. And this is the picture you're painting. And of course it creates a logical problem when you say, well, God says it's not right to rape and it's immoral to just stand around if someone's being raped in front of you and hear the, the being with the most possible power in the situation, the, the one with the most agency, actually stands by and watches them all. The logical problem with that, of course, is that you will then say, such as the Bible thumping wingnut said at one point in time, if a human being rapes another human being, that it's absolutely wrong. But if you hold to the notion that everything that happens is part of God's plan, then that rape couldn't have been immoral because God's plan is perfect. So you can't actually rail against any given instance of rape because that rape, by definition, is part of God's perfect plan. It is moral. It is good. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> if you know, if, if something is an objective standard, then God needs to abide by it too. And if God doesn't abide by it, if he has his own set of rules based on just what he wants, then in any given instance of suffering on the part of some human being, like for instance, a baby being raped, you can't call that immoral anymore once it's happened, because it obviously is part of God's perfect plan. I think the reason that Veckel got so angry at hearing his own words played back for him on Skylar Fiction's video is because internally he's recognizing a problem. It's a, there's a cognitive dissonance in there, but it, some part of his brain is registering that. Danger, Will Robinson. There's a logical disconnect here. 
it's hard, it boggles the mind to imagine someone who's so vehemently against rape and murder and slavery, but then has to make these weird arguments to, to allow for their God to be sort of saved harmless in these situations when this is the, the being with the highest, uh, the most possible agency, right? The most power in the situation. And, and again, you know, just to make it clear, I'm not arguing against an entity that I believe exists. I'm trying to show how logically flawed the concept is in the first place and how morally flawed the concept is. Of course, G-Man started making the case towards the end of this seven or so minute clip that um, Skylar Fiction posted. Oh, well, what's your basis for morality? So he's starting to do the presuppositional apologetic thing. But we don't need a basis for morality when you're the one proposing the entity, uh, because all we have to do is ask the question that Schuyler did, is he being consistent with his own dictates? And if he's not, then then at least be honest with yourselves and, and admit that you're not talking about an objective moral standard, you're talking about a subjective one, subject to the will and wishes of God. And I noticed that um, Matt Bell commented and asked, I think Eve Real a question, are you saying that uh, an omnibenevolent God, if he did exist, would be then therefore tasked with preventing all uh, rapes of babies? Categorically, yes, if this is the mo highest moral being. Certainly, if I witnessed a rape in front of me and I chose to turn my back and go back to eating my Cheerios, I would bear some moral responsibility. And I'm a person of limited agency. Obviously, God has probably just a smidge more agency than I do, a bit more power to control things. Uh, but again, I will say, if you believe in God's perfect plan, you cannot be against rape absolutely. Not once it's happened, because that must, by definition, form part of your God's perfect plan. Do you see the problem yet? Thanks everyone, as always, for watching.